Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to be drawing free body diagrams. Free body diagrams, they allow us to solve very complex physics problems by just isolating all the forces that are acting on one individual body. So this is not true physics, this is video game physics from the video game Portal, which is very fun. Um, but if we look at all the forces that are acting just on this one individual body, in this case the player in the video game, then we can solve the problem. Now the easiest way to get good at free body diagrams is to practice them, and so in this podcast we're going to do a lot of practice. So first of all we have to identify what are all the forces or what are the common forces that can act on objects. And so if we've got an apple sitting right here there are two groups of forces that act on the apple. Those that are really distant and those that are in contact with the object. And so distant means that they're not actually touching the object. And so clearly gravity is working on this object, on this apple that's sitting here on the table. Now normally when I write gravity or the force of gravity, what I'll always write is F for the big force and then uh, an abbreviation underneath it, in this case gravity. And so in which direction is that acting? Well, it's acting down towards the center of the earth. And so there's a force of gravity acting on the apple uh, down. Now forces are vectors, so it's not only should it be the correct size, but it should be the correct direction. Now there are clearly electromagnetic forces acting on the apple as well, but generally I'm just going to ignore those because they're pretty small in most of the uh, problems that we'll do. Okay, so why doesn't the apple just go through this table here down to the center of the earth? Well, the reason why is that we actually have a normal force acting on it. A normal force is acting in the opposite direction, and so that force is exerted by the table. And so these two arrows should be the same length because those forces are balanced or they're equal. Now one thing you should always remember about normal forces is, is that they always act perpendicular to the, um, to the surface that they're sitting on. And so we'll come back to that on a, on a problem in a little bit. Um, we also have tensional forces. So forces, forces of uh, tension are going to be when we have an object that, for example, is hanging from a rope and that's suspended from the ceiling. And so if we have an object that's hanging from a rope, then there's a tensional force that is moving in the other direction. And so these two, normal force and tensional force, they both counteract gravity in this case. Okay, next one, I'm gonna clear off the screen for a little bit so I can get a little bit of room. Next would be an applied force. An applied force, I'll usually write like this. Let's say I apply a force to this apple. Let's say I push it in this direction with my hand. So I'm pushing it in that direction. That would be applied force in this direction. It means that I'm actually doing work. I'm moving that object. Now if I try to move the apple in that direction, there are going to be forces that oppose that motion. And that would be the force of friction. So we call that the force of friction. And so the force of friction is going to be the molecules rubbing right down here. And so it would be moving in the other direction. And there's also a force of air resistance. And that force of air resistance is also going to be moving in the other direction. I'm going to draw that arrow a little bit smaller because it's probably not as big as the frictional forces. But as it gets faster and faster, air resistance is going to be a bigger force. And then the last one is going to be a spring force. Uh, a spring force would be, for example, let's say we have this apple suspended by a spring but that spring is in tension, so when we release the apple, the apple goes shooting in the other direction. So that would be a spring force. And spring force is, you have to figure out what kind of, is the spring under compression or is it in tension uh, to figure out which way that object is actually going to move. So let me get these out of the way. Those are the, for, the basic forces, and there are other ones, but those are the basic forces that we're going to deal with. And so let's just go through and do some practice ones. Now, uh, with each of these, what I would encourage you to do is after I describe the problem, the best way to learn how to do it is to just practice. And so first one, what we've got is a bottle of wine that sits on a table. So we're just looking at the forces that are acting on this bottle of wine right here. And so you can always pause the video and, and try and do this force diagram uh, or the free body diagram. So this is how it should look. So there's going to be, all of mine are always, remember, going to be a box to represent the object. So I'm going to draw from the center of gravity, I'm going to draw the force of gravity acting down on that bottle of wine. Now the bottle of wine is not moving, and so there is an equal force in the other direction, and we're going to call that the normal force. Now I don't see any other forces acting on the object, and so this would be the correct 
a uh, free body diagram for a bottle of wine sitting on a table. Okay, let's try another one. All right, this one we've got a blacksmith sign that hangs from a beam. And so we've got an object that's suspended by two chains, it looks like. And so let me draw the object itself is going to be a box. We're going to have the force down of gravity. Now in this case we have a force up, but that force up is going to be the force of this chain and the force of that chain, and they look to be balanced. And so I'm going to draw a force like that and a force like that. And so these two forces are going to be tensional forces. And these two right here, the distance of that to that, if I add two of those, that should be equal to the force of the gravity down here. In other words, if I were to add those two vectors up, the force of gravity and then the two forces of tension, we'd find that the object really isn't moving at all. And so that'd be the correct free body diagram of a blacksmith sign hanging from a beam. Okay. Let's try another one. So the next one what we've got is a ball accelerating down a ramp. Now one thing you want to start listening for is acceleration or constant velocity. If something's accelerating that means it's getting faster and faster and that usually means we have unbalanced forces. If it's constant velocity in these problems that means that the forces are balanced and we'll get to one of those in a second. Okay so this one let's first of all draw the box. So this represents the ball. There's going to be the force down. So that's the force of gravity. Okay. Now let's look at all the forces around this ball right here. So first of all, the ball is sitting on an inclined plane and moving down or a ramp. And so there's a normal force here, but the normal force, remember, the normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the ramp that you're sitting on. And so there's going to be a normal force in that direction. So I'm going to call that the force normal. Okay. Next, the ball is rolling down the plane. And so we also have a frictional force. Now it's not, probably not very big. And we also have an air resistance force. Now those ones, so frictional force and air resistance, instead of being perpendicular, they're actually going to be uh, perpendicular to the, or excuse me, parallel to the motion. And so if it's a normal force, that's always going to be perpendicular. But in this case, since it's going in this direction, motions in that direction, our force is going to be uh, parallel. And so I'm going to try to draw, and that's not very good, but I'm going to try to draw a line that's parallel to the ramp. And I could always represent that as the force of friction. And lots of times I'll just double these up and then the force of air resistance. And so that represents both of those. And those are going to be up the ramp. Now I can't see any other forces acting on it. It's the force of gravity that's causing it to accelerate down the ramp. Okay, let's do another one. Next one we've got. A box is dragged across the floor with a rope. So it doesn't tell us much about if it's accelerating or not, but it's being dragged across the floor. And so let me draw this one. First of all, the box looks like this. This is the first box that's actually a box. We've got the force down of gravity. Again, that's one that you can pretty much get used to drawing in all of these. Now it's being pulled at an angle. Let me try to get my angle about right. So it's being pulled in that direction, and we're going to call that the applied force. So we're in applying a force, and we're applying a force at an angle. Now there's also going to be forces that are slowing it down, and so those are going to be frictional forces, and so that's going to be parallel to what we're on. And so we're going to have the force of friction, and then we're going to have the force of air resistance as well. And that's it. Those are all the forces that are acting on that box. So let's try another one. Next one, I love ones like this. Next, we've got a golf ball. So we're dealing just with this golf ball right here. And it's just been hit. So the club just swung, uh, <laughs> just came by, hit the golf ball. Now it's kind of in flight. And so how do we do that? Well, let's draw the box to represent the golf ball again. So we've got the force of gravity that's acting down on the golf ball. Now a tendency, I've seen students do this a lot, is since it's moving or it's been hit, the tendency is to put some kind of an applied force on that. But remember, once we've hit it, then there's no force acting on it. And so the only other force that's acting on it is going to be the force of 
since it's not on the ground, it's still going to be the force of air resistance. And so it looks like the ball kind of went in this direction, so it went like that. And so I draw my force of air resistance in the opposite direction. Uh, and those are the only forces that are acting on it. There's no applied force because we already applied that force, and that's, made it, that's what made it take off. All right. Last one then. This is the last one. We've got a climber. And the climber is rappelling down a rope, and the climber is moving at a constant speed. Okay, so it's not accelerating, so let me draw the object again. So we've got force of gravity, that's acting down on the object. And now we've got a force that's going up. So if there was no rope, that would be the only force except for maybe air resistance going in the other direction. But what's slowing you down is that you'll run the rope through uh, a carabiner or through a, um, some kind of a figure eight device. And that slows down the climber. And so it's friction that's actually slowing down the climber. And so we would have the force of tension that's holding it there. But it's also the force of friction inside that rope that is slowing it down. And since that uh, climber is moving down at a constant speed, the force of gravity and the force of tension and friction are going to be balanced or they're going to be equal. And so if you're ever moving at a constant velocity, we can't tell um, the difference, at least in a force diagram, between that and then just sitting there. In other words, not moving. Uh, and so that's one common misconception that we have on, on free body diagrams. Um, but that's about it. And so I hope that's helpful.